Hello, and welcome to Forestville United Methodist Church. I'm Sybil Peril, the pastor here and at Olivet Church in Lylesville, North Carolina. I'm really glad you decided to join me for this time together on the eve of Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you wherever you may be. We love you here in Lylesville. Our opening hymn is the first verse of number 733 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Marching to Zion. Words are by Isaac Watts and music by Robert Lowry. Hope you'll sing with me this rousing song as we march to Zion. Come with that love of the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus around the throne, and thus around the throne, we're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. What a great song to start off with. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we realize our ways are not your ways. Help us to work to be those who are marching to Zion, coming home to our blessings and not our woes. Guide and direct us as we look at the words of Jesus for our lives today. In his name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version today. Please read along with me in whatever translation you have available, if you have a Bible or a New Testament handy. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon, they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Luke's version of the Beatitudes is called the Sermon on the Plains instead of the Sermon on the Mount, since Luke tells us he speaks to them in a level place. And it's not this version of the Beatitudes that we ordinarily think of or like to use, all because of those woes in there. A woe, according to Webster, is a condition of deep suffering from misfortune, affliction, or grief. So you may have heard an older person say something like, woe is me. It can also be a calamity or affliction itself, like the woes of parenthood or financial woes. Some people would call these curses. Like in the Old Testament, when Moses spoke to the Israelites about following God's ways, 
there was the challenge of doing good and following the law that had been given to them. If they did that, there would be blessing. But if they fell away from their faith in God and refused to follow God's laws, the opposite would be true, and there would be curses. In Matthew's version of the Beatitudes, there are only blessings. And we can all relate to how we would fit into at least one of those blessings. But here in Luke's version, there are blessings and then there are woes. And look at the blessings themselves. If you're poor or hungry or sad or persecuted, you will be blessed. These are people we would ordinarily think were anything but blessed. These are the ones who are saying, woe is me. But the woes go to the ones we would think are pretty blessed in this life. The rich, the full, those who are carefree and those that are thought well of in the community. But Jesus singles them out, saying in effect that they are cursed. It begs the question, why? We have to remember that Jesus was a radical. He was trying to turn religion on its head, and he did. We see throughout the Old Testament that the Jewish people felt that if God liked you, God would bless you with good stuff in this life. And if God was angry with you, you got zapped in some way. A good example of this is the book of Job. It tells us that Job was a righteous man, and God had blessed him with herds and flocks and ten children. But Satan goaded God by telling him that, sure, Job was a pious man. Who wouldn't be if he was so richly blessed? But take away all his stuff and Job would curse God to his face. So God allowed Satan to take away all of Job's stuff and then took away his health as well. Job questioned God and wanted to plead his case before God, explaining that he had done nothing wrong. But through it all, even with his wife and friends not believing him, Job remained steadfast toward God never losing his faith. And God gave him back his health and all his stuff. So people without stuff, no wealth, no position in the community, no power. These were the cursed, as far as the Jewish people were concerned. The ones who had obviously done something really bad had sinned in some big way because God had taken everything away from them. That's just how they felt about it. And in our world today, who do we consider to have been blessed? We look at the people who have billions of dollars. They have three or more houses and all the gadgets and things money can buy. And we wish we were them. We go out and buy one more lottery ticket, hoping that we will be the one to win this time and put all our problems behind us. We think that the rich and the powerful have it made. They have all this world can give them and they use it to its fullest potential. But here in today's scripture, Jesus totally turns all that upside down, showing us that God's ways of thinking, they are truly not ours. Jesus tells us it's the poor, and not necessarily the spiritually poor, but the physically poor, who will be truly blessed. And not just them, those who are physically hungry and those that are grieving. He adds that if we are persecuted for our faith, we will be rewarded, because that's what's happened with God's prophets of old. These are the powerless, the nobodies the homeless, the destitute, the invisible. Why would Jesus bless these in the next life? Because if you are one of them, you depend on God and not yourself or your fellow humans. You depend on God to help you because you know you can't help yourself and other people don't even acknowledge you at all. 
Oscar Romero, who was the Archbishop, Archbishop of San Salvador and who was assassinated while conducting a mass, preached on this idea of the poor being blessed. For this was his gift to people. This was his concentration on the poor and how the powerful had taken advantage. He said, the world says, blessed are the rich. You are worth as much as you have. But Christ says, wrong. Blessed are the poor because they do not put their trust in what is so transitory. Blessed are the poor for they know their riches are in the one who being rich made himself poor in order to enrich us with his poverty, teaching us the Christian's true wisdom. And the rich and the powerful, Jesus has them receive the woes because they tend to depend on themselves. They got where they are on their own, they think. They picked themselves up by their bootstraps and carried on. They feel they have earned what they have because they have worked hard and deserve the better things. And when you're rich and powerful, people just naturally want to be around you and they say they like you. But these people have re already received their reward here on earth. They feel they don't need God. They can make it on their own. And, and if you don't feel like you need anyone else, if you feel you are truly self-sufficient, you're never going to worry about God and what comes after this life. You have all you need right here and right now. And Jesus tells us that's all they will get. It's all they deserve. And even when things go terribly wrong for them, an accident or illness maybe, or, or they lose all their money and their prestige in the community, even then they don't turn to God, but will try to fix it on their own. They'll get the best doctors, or they'll get a loan to get started all over again. And they just think they can work their way back no matter what. They still don't depend on anyone or anything except themselves. You know, a couple of these woes hit real close to home for me and, and maybe for you too. Like the idea of being full. I don't know about you, but I don't miss many meals and you can tell, but Jesus isn't saying because we're well fed that this applies to us. He is saying that we must show gratitude where it is due for all that we have. And gratitude is due to God. But it's also that we share what we have with those who don't have as much to be willing to give of ourselves and our things so that others may also have some. And then there's that part about people speaking well of you. I like people to like me. I like for them to speak well of me and to tell people they like me. I think we all like that. Again, that's not the bad thing. And we shouldn't go out of our way to be excluded and hated by others. But we also shouldn't get all puffed up when people like us and feel that we're better than other people. It is only through God that we are full, are well-liked, are happy, and spoken well of. We should give our praise and our glory to God for all that we have. But there's also a duty to be a good steward of what we have and use it for good and not just for ourselves. Jesus' point here is that we are only rewarded in heaven when we have a relationship with God. 
when we understand that we need God in our lives, when we make sure that we depend on God, not just for our daily bread, but for all that happens in our lives, when we thank God for the food we eat, for the bed we sleep in, for the roof over our heads, when we acknowledge that we are nothing without God, and when we work to show others this way of living and being so that they too will find their way with God. This is when we are truly blessed. Well, it begs the question, which are you? Depending on God each and every day, feeling the blessedness of God, even if you don't have much materially? Or are you depending on yourself and yourself only to get you through your day? Think about it. Amen and amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, we're so thankful to be able to be back in church, to be able to get together some. We're thankful that the COVID numbers are coming down and that maybe, maybe soon we will be able to be back into our normal life. We thank you for new babies. Little Tate Lee Shepherd was born this week. And we thank you, Lord, that he is that he is healthy and that his mother is doing well. Thank you, Lord, for healthy babies. We thank you, too, for the Samaritan's House over in Rockingham, the shelter for women that is now able to break ground after receiving enough money to get started on a new building, a new dormitory for their women. We thank you that little Birdie is back in, in Moore County and continuing to grow and do well. And we are just so blessed, Lord by her being in our lives. We thank you for her, and we just ask your blessings on her and her continued healing so that she could come home and be with us and grow to understand who you are and what a miracle you performed in her life before she even knew you. Amazing. We thank you that those who were out of town have traveled safely back home. And we are thankful that we can again begin to get together with friends and family without worrying so much about having a mask on. As always, Lord, we have concerns. We ask you to be with Robert as he comes home from the nursing home on hospice care. We just ask for you to be with him and his family as they come home and, and knowing that he will be constant care. But out of their love, they will do it. And we thank you for the blessing of hospice and what it is able to do for people these days. We ask you to be with the Tucker and the Jones families as they bury their dead and as they grieve the loss. We ask you to be with Harvey as he goes for his treatments again this week. And Lord, we ask for your healing for him, that you will lay your hands upon him, help him to know that he is prayed over and prayed for and that he is loved not only by his friends and family, but by this whole community. We ask you to be with those who are ill, those in the hospital with COVID, those 
who are going through other illnesses. I ask you to be with my friend Terry as he goes soon for surgery for cancer. Just be with him and Beth and, and keep them close to you, Lord. Give them your comfort and your care and lay your hand of healing on him. We ask you to be with Robert and all those who are on hospice care as they look to what will happen next. And Lord, we ask you to be a blessing to him instead of a woe when his time comes. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Our final hymn is the first verse of number 410, I Want a Principle Within. The words are by Charles Wesley, who helped to found Methodism. And the music is by Louis Spohr. Just the first verse. I want a principle within a watchful godly fear, a sensibility of sin, a pain to feel it near. I want the first approach to feel of pride or wrong desire. To watch the wandering of my will and quench the kindling fire. I love that song. Our announcements, uh, Bible study is still going on. We are in the middle of Genesis now, chapters 26 through 31, and we will meet this evening at 5.30 and at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning in the Parsonage living room. Come join us if you can. Bring a mask and your Bible, and that's all you need to study with us. Olivet's mission for February is soap and toothpaste for ants in crisis ministry. Forestville's mission for February is a love offering that will be taken up all during the month of February. At the end of the month, the church will match the funds received and send one check to the Salvation Army. So if you would like to contribute to this, uh, we are accepting anyone's money for that project. Uh, you can send that to in care of Forestville United Methodist Church. P.O. Box 452, Lylesville, North Carolina, 28091. We'd be, be sure to make your check out to Forestville United Methodist Church and then put in the memo line uh, the name Salvation Army. CPR training will be next Saturday, the 19th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in the Fellowship Hall at Olivet. And this is simply knowing how to do CPR for a loved one or someone that you, uh, you know. It is hands-only CPR. There are no mouth-to-mouth um, no -mouth required. It is open to anyone over the age of about 15, 16, unless they're a big strapping youth because it takes quite a bit to press down a chest two, three, four inches. Forestville's council and planning meeting that was canceled due to the snow will be next Sunday, the 20th at 3 o'clock in the Church Fellowship Hall. And we'll be looking at the end of the um, of 2021 financial numbers as well as planning for next year. If you have comments or would like to talk further about blessings and woes, just be sure and leave me a um, comment here on YouTube or Facebook, whichever one you are on. And uh, if you are listening in sermon by phone, then you can write me at P.O. Box 452 Lylesville, North Carolina 28091. 
you can call or text me at 704-640-6872. I'd love to hear from you and what your thoughts are on blessings and woes or anything else. Receive now this blessing. Go knowing that God loves you and wants to be a blessing in your life. Be thankful and throw your concerns and your entire life at God's disposal. Tell God that you are willing to do and want to do and understand that He and only He can draw you through this life to the next. May He guide and direct your steps each and every step of the way. Go now in peace. Amen. Thanks so much for being with me today. We'll continue straight on through this section of Luke next Sunday, talking further about what it means to be a Christian and to uh, love and not hate. God loves you and I do too. Take care. Bye-bye now. <laughs>